just gone quarter to seven. It's that time for me to introduce the one and only Van Connor. Here he is. <laughs> How you doing, Van? Oh, I'm good, sir. How goes you this week? Yeah, really good. Um, lovely to have you back on the show. Missed you last week. I heard you uh, heard you on the show, but obviously I wasn't here. So uh, good to have a little catch up with you again. Um, there's some great movers out this week. There really are. So where should we start then? Should we uh, should we start with the Birds of Prey this week? So I think that might be the most anticipated film coming out. Yeah, let's start with Birds of Prey. Of course, this is uh, this is the big Harley Quinn movie. Of course. So this is Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. And to give it its full title. This is a sort of spin-off, sequel, follow-up, whatever you want to call it, to uh, Suicide Squad from a few years ago, in which Harley's had enough of her toxic relationship with the Joker. She has dumped him. She's gone out on her own. But it turns out that without uh, her uh, iconically criminal boyfriend there to ward them off, everyone she's ever wronged is now out for blood. And she's forced to team up with equally scorned fellow women to basically fend off the big bads. I've got a clip for you. They're all here for me, aren't they? No. They're not? No, they're not. Do you know what that means? That means he's not just after the kid anymore. He's after all of us. Sure as hell after me. I just robbed him. You just betrayed him. You just killed his BFF. And you're dumb enough to be building a case against him. So, unless we all want to die very unpleasant deaths and let Roman go finger fishing in the kid's intestinal tract, we're going to have to work together. I mean, Margot Robbie has always been fantastic as Harley Quinn. I'm assuming she's just as good in this one. I mean, I've never particularly enjoyed her as a character, but I, have, but I did here. I think she's given room to make this her own. This basically works as a sort of female counterpart to Deadpool, as far as how the film is constructed, how the character is played within a sort of meta commentary, fourth wall breaking kind of a way. Um, I will argue that it falls apart a little bit in the final third, but that does seem to be a staple of even things like Wonder Woman in the DC genre, where the third act never quite lives up to it. Yeah. Uh, I still think Shazam is the best of these. But this is a very close second. This is a lot of fun. It's got a lot of energy. It's got a lot of wit. It's got a lot of charm. It's got a lot of anarchic uh, glee going for it as well. I would absolutely catch this. Okay, Van points out of 10. I would give this a solid eight. Okay, well, that's good. That's a very good score for Van for Van Connor. Um, right, Robert Downey Jr. We're looking at Doolittle now. I love Robert Downey Jr. Please tell me he does this justice. Well, unfortunately, Robert Downey Jr. does not do this justice. Oh. It might actually be the worst thing on his entire CV, and that is a CV that includes the movie The Shaggy Dog. Oh. So the bar is not exactly set high. <laughs> this is Doolittle reinvented by way of sort of a Tim Burton, Willy Wonka style bent, where he's now a sort of cut-off, traumatised weirdo whose adventure event her wife died on her her last her last jaunt her last expedition he's called back into service with his animal talking skills when queen victoria is poisoned and the only cure is a rare exotic flower that happens to reside where his wife was going so three guesses what his mission then becomes <laughs> um it's not terribly very good there was a lot of behind the scenes uh kerfuffling going on with this it was reshot twice um what you've got now is a movie that's just a frankenstein hodgepodge of different movies the character isn't consistent the accent is deranged the script is garbage the visuals simply don't work at one point uh Doolittle actually stops dead to congratulate se several characters on storylines they haven't actually had that were presumably in an earlier version of the film and have since been deleted the whole thing is a shambles you love the but film then <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, the the, pre the previous Universal Talking Animals film prior to this was Cats. So I can at least say that this is better than Cats. But that is a very low bar. That's not saying much, really, is it? Let's be fair. No, it's not. I mean, I'm going to give it. A I'm going to give it a three, and I'm just going to drop in one very quick review because uh, we didn't have a clip for this because it's Korean, and I wanted to end on something really great. And this is a film you want to be paying attention to ahead of the Oscars on Sunday. It's Bong Joon Ho's Parasite, which I'm going to tell you very little about. So safe to say that it is a suburban sort of psychological drama comedy thriller yeah. set in South Korea in, in the Korean language. It's from the director of Snowpiercer. It is absolutely terrific. It is a solid 9 out of 10 from me. Really? You absolutely have to see this film. This will win Best International Feature come Sunday. I've got money on it winning Best Director as well. Maybe not Best Picture, that'll go to 1917. But absolutely see Parasite. 
So it, apparently, it's won quite a few BAFTAs. The director had to have a translator for all of his acceptance speeches when he won the BAFTAs. He's a very charismatic man, and his body of work is never less than interesting. Like, Snowpiercer was one of my favourite films of the last decade. I quite liked Oaksha a couple of years ago with the the Super Pig, where he, it was about the breeding of the Super Pig to solve world hunger. Uh, the Host, as well. He's a very, very good, very visionary director, and this film might actually be his best one yet. So despite the fact it's subtitles, which I can never seem to get around, with good films I just I can't I just maybe I can't multitask I can't read and watch at the same time I have to do one or the other but despite that you're saying we can still get into this film and it's worth watching I'm saying it's so gripping it's so tense it's so weirdly funny at times as well that you won't care that it's subtitled it is it's just a brilliant film okay so uh, we need to just go back what was your um, van points for Doolittle for Doolittle I'm going to give that a three I really didn't rate it oh dear okay and then your van points for Parasite was nine out of ten nine I'm a solid wow. I'd, give it, I'd give it a 10, but I refuse to give anything a 10 on principle. <laughs> I'm kind of the same as that. Nothing's ever perfect in life, is it, Van? Let's be fair. Not quite. But, you know, he did come close with Snowpiercer in my book. But, uh, incidentally, on Film 4, on rotation at the minute, if you've never seen Snowpiercer, watch Snowpiercer. I trust your uh, recommendations as ever, Van. So thank you very much for coming on today. And, of course, we'll catch you again next week. Have a lovely week, all right? Until the next time, good sir. Thank you very much, Van. Van Connor. Movie critic extraordinaire. Uh, right.